jump to your feet right now. Oh, young people in the house. Y'all people in the house, y'all know how we doing? Are you ready? Take it. Are you ready? Come on, come on now. Ain't no talk like. Ain't no talk like. Ain't no talk like. Ain't no talk like. Come on now. Ain't no talk like. Ain't no talk like. Ain't no talk like. Somebody scream from the east side to the west side. That's what I'm talking about. Teen Talk Television, America's number one Teen Talk Television show. And everybody knows that ain't no talk like. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody say, I want it. Good evening, East St. Louis, Madison, and Venice, Lovejoy, both sides of the river. Once again, you're tuned into Teen Talk Television, America's number one Teen Talk Television show. And everybody knows that ain't no talk like. That's right. Hi, I'm Camille. I'm 15, and I go to Belleville West High School. All right. Keaton? My name is Keaton Higgins. I am 13 years old, and I go to Worth 8th grade, grade Academy. All right. I'm Dominic. I'm 16. I go to Belleville East. Belleville East. My name is Tamaje Cook. I attend O'Fallon Township High School. I am in the 11th grade, and I'm 16 years old. All right. I'm Haviland. I'm 13, and I go to West Junior High. All right. My name is Kevontrez Cook, a.k.a. Scooter. I'm mm -hmm. 17, and I go to Lebanon High School. All right, well, it is really awesome. Uh, one thing I'm so glad to have representation from all schools within the Metro East. I mean, we're talking about O'Fallon, Belleville East, Belleville West. We've got Lebanon, we've got junior high schools. And one thing I hope you take from this show as young people, I want you all to understand you can be ambassadors in your schools. You could be the ones to be the light that's on a hill that cannot be here. So I hope. Like you said, I never thought that anything like um, young African-American men dying from the police or anything or any legal force would happen here. Belleville, um, East St. Louis, all of it are, we're all really small towns. Mm -hmm. And um, we all are just like little cities around St. Louis. That's yeah. what people think of us. But, you know, we all are affected by things in Ferguson. We're affected by things in St. Louis. We all are affected by the world, you know. Mm -hmm. And to see that a young man dying is right here. It's not in Florida. It's not in California. It's here. Mm -hmm. It's in your face. It, it shocks you, mm -hmm. you know. Like, you wake up and you realize that could be your brother. That could be your cousin. Yeah. It's here. And um, it's not right. I mean... Stealing isn't right. Yeah. What he did wasn't right, but taking a life isn't any better. Mm -hmm. So that's my opinion on it. Okay. Now what this has been something that's been on my mind for a long time. Like with the Mike Brown, the Mike Brown situation, I don't see it as a race situation. I don't see it as a race situation. I see videos of police officers. Um, one video I saw really disturbed me. There were two police officers. They beat a woman, then they raped her. Another police officer. He punched a man in the face multiple times after pulling him over on the road because he didn't have his license. Um, another situation, the man that got choked out and mm -hmm. he had asthma and he wasn't even doing anything. Mm -hmm. Then another situation, the man was trying to break up a fight and he was beaten and arrested. Mm -hmm. So I see it as a sign of police officers over abusing their power. Mm -hmm. So instead of me feeling safe around police officers like we're supposed to be, mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually scared because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just white on black or black on black, black or any other thing. It's just like they just do it to do it. Mm -hmm. And to me, I feel like I'm not protected. Yeah. So it's really hard for me to say, like, I trust the police officer and, like, I feel safe around them when I don't because of stuff like this that I see happening every day. It's like, how can you? Mm -hmm. So that's what I think about every day. And it's like they're just over abusing their powers, and it's it's not right. It's yeah. not fair, and they don't the government they don't do anything about it. Yeah. Well, one thing Taz, um, that the police they like Taz said they do overpower what they um are supposed to do. Even back when Martin Luther King they took the water hose and burnt all I mean watered down all the children. I think it's not right to what. They do. You're more scared of the police than you are that you feel protected with them. Because mm -hmm. I, be I believe that what they did was wrong. You didn't have to shoot. I, th I think that the police should 
shoot a warning shot at least instead of just, oh, you won't do this, oh, I'm going to shoot you. So you don't know what to do around the police. You don't know what to feel, what to say. You can't even say anything or they might say, oh, he said he was going to kill me. He had a gun. You can't even put your hand in your pocket or they think you have a gun and you could die. Mm -hmm. Anything that you do around the police. So I think that that's why you should stay away from any anything that you go to jail for because you don't know what the police might do, yeah. what happened that day. They could be in a bad situation that they don't care what they do. They don't yeah. care if they get fired, that they could just kill you, kill you no matter what. Yeah. And then now that you're dead, you can't stand like, oh, I didn't do that. I didn't do this. You can't do that because you're dead. You're in the grave. Yeah. You can't even respond to what, what they're saying. You can't say that they're lying. You can't do nothing. Okay. And I just think I'm smart. I'm making a good decision because – I swing so swing on somebody at school. I'm going to jail. Got to pay a fine. It's on my record. Right. You just walk away. Your grandma. So and and, and I like the I like where you're going with that because what what could end up happening is off a boo that you did not know you could end up with a felony record and going to jail is what you're telling me, right? So, what do you think about this situation? You one of my look. I think like one of the main things that triggers violence is like people don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I know that if like you say you have the advantage, I just need to wait till I can. But people don't understand that waiting will give you the advantage. I think if you have a gun, I need to have a gun too. So mm -hmm. when you start firing at me, I can fire at you. We even. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that by me not having a gun, I'm in the right because you can fire me all day long. Mm -hmm. And when it's all said and done, I did nothing to you. Yeah. But when you try to take control in your own hands and be equal with people who already have the authority you just send yourself up for failure and mm -hmm. they don't understand and then they see people like rappers and stuff talk about things like firing back and they think that's what i'm supposed to do that's how i'm supposed to make it if i be like them then maybe i'll be somebody maybe everybody will know who i am nothing will happen they don't see everything that happens behind the doors and how they went to jail mm -hmm. and all this yeah. And you think they rich and everything, and they still living in the projects just like you. Mm -hmm. But people don't see all of that. They just hear it, and they fall for it. So I think that creates a lot of the problems, too. Okay. Scooter, what do you think about th this uh, this whole situation? How did it affect you being an uh, African-American male? I just think that uh, the police override their powers because they got a badge and mm -hmm. a pistol in their hand. So when they had a day... They all mad, so they think about oh, I'm having a bad day. I'm gonna take it out on a on a citizen. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think that we as a citizen can do? I mean, do you think it can? What, what do you think we could do to, to to keep it from popping off or, or going to the extreme? Do you, is there anything like in your generation? Is there anything that you can think that uh, guys your age could do to keep it from coming to a head? I mean, you know how to act. Just 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 in your own thought. Just like. They see an officer, they just act normal. Don't get an officer a uh, uh, a reason a reason to shoot you. Good, okay. Right, right. Say, uh, uh, don't don't uh, uh, like a lot of times we may aggravate. You know, like you said, somebody sitting on a lot and they bumping the music. Well, you know, you can't bump your music. You know, with your bass in the car. And like sometimes, how do how do you? Well, with <laughs> all this Mike Brown and stuff, like. Just growing up as a little kid, I see people disrespect people all the time. People disrespect the cops. Growing up, I grew up in the hood like a long time ago. I seen people fighting and stuff. Police pull. You grew up, up in the hood, Dominic. I mean, like, I mean, yeah. the real hood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And okay. then people, you know, <laughs> swinging on the cops and everything. And like now, a black, a black kid gets shot by a cop. Everybody mm. want to make a big scene about it, but at the same time, it's just respect. You gotta respect everybody, but fear none and just put it all in God's hand. People always want to take action instead of going to God first. Okay. Now, do do you think that he? Do you think it was justified in your opinion? Uh, what? I mean, I don't want to say I know anything because don't nobody know but God and mm -hmm. the people that was there. I wasn't there, mm -hmm. and so nobody know but God. Okay. All right, Camille, you have something to say for me? Okay. I think a lot of it is our different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I have my like my friends. If somebody, just like the scenario that you gave, if somebody wants to fight one of my friends, the first thing that automatically would jump in the head, I'm going straight to the cafeteria. I'm fighting. And um, just like... You could be, I mean, my Camille here at the church. I mean. Just like, well, just not me, but <laughs> just like I went to a party yesterday, and people and the police end up coming. People were fighting with the police there. You don't under... The, it's dark. It's, out, it's outside. It's dark. The police are in black. 
do you think that the police are going to leave until everybody else leaves? I mean, that's seriously what they're going to do. But they don't care. They, they feel like, this is me. You need to respect me. I'm going to fight you regardless. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to jail. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get arrested. It's going to be on my record. But that's because you disrespected me. And at the end of the day, when I go home to my mama, she's going to say I was right because I got my respect at the end of the day. It's not about, you know, I want a job later on in life. I don't want that on my record. I want to teach my kids something right. I can't tell my kids something if I got a record. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about at that moment, you disrespected me, so I got to teach you not yeah. to disrespect me. You know, me and Havy, growing up, my parent, my father is a major at a prison, and my mother uh, is a DCFS social investigator. So growing up, my whole life, I've seen uh, adults, well, I've heard about adults who have made bad decisions who messed their whole lives up. You mm -hmm. losing your kids. You living your life in jail, in prison for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So my whole life, basically, my parents have taught me, don't do anything that is going to affect you in the end. That's going to mess your life up yeah. in the end. And you take your freedom away. Yeah. You got to do the you got to make decisions. Okay, you disrespect me right now, but later on in life when I got the job, I'm the CEO and you still in East St. Louis, mm -hmm. who going to be the respected one at the end? Right. You know, it's all about it's not about right now, it's about the future. It's about my future. It's about what I what I want to do when I get older. What I want to be, the person that I want to be mm -hmm. later on in life, not now. Okay. Okay, well, I'm hoping that pastors all over the country, because like you said, we got to come out the pulpit, come outside the walls, get back in the streets, and be more than just preaching on Sundays, but being out there helping people on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Dr. King and Malcolm X was in their 20s. What does that say about us? Mm -hmm. Reverend Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, man, they're getting up in age. They already did the stuff. They already worked on civil rights movement back in the 60s, man. They're getting up in age. It's time for some young people to step up to the plate and start making some stuff happen and start implementing change in the communities who ain't scared. And I'm not scared because one thing, the only, only thing a person can do to me, Reverend, is kill me. Because uh -huh. Dr. King said, if you ain't willing to die for something, you ain't fit to live. I know, I know that you weren't always way up there, but the Lord has elevated you. So I want to get you and then you, and we really appreciate that. And know that we love you in St. Louis. All right. Well, I would like to say to all of the young ladies watching that, First of all, you have to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Um, God won't limit you if you don't limit God. It doesn't matter what your past is, what your past experiences have been. You might have been molested, you might have been raped, you might not have a mama or a daddy, you might be poor, broke, busted, and disgusted. But that does not even matter as long as you know that God is mighty, He is powerful, and He does not have respect of person. Just like He blessed us and took two little poor girls from Inglewood and let us live our dreams, and now we're representing Him, singing on big stages and all of this kind of stuff. We never thought that it would happen like this, but we held on to God and believed that he could do anything, and he did it for us, just like he can do it for y'all. All right now. The key thing is to remember that what he does for one, he will do for others. And you have to remember that everybody has a, a once upon a time, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a in the beginning, right. And then there's a happily ever after. Well, in the middle, there's tragedy, there's stress, there's problems, there's issues. So there's things that you have to overcome. You have to fight and stay focused and be determined to win, to excel, to make the best of your opportunities, you know what I mean? Don't don't look at any opportunity as small. Look at everything as this is my next, this is my stepping stone for something greater. And if you keep that in mind, then greatness is in store for you. But you always have to keep God first. Right. Always keep God first. Yeah. Willie D. Brown, WDB, all right. Yes. We're here live. Just be encouraged to know that as you keep God first in everything that you do, I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like, the Bible says, Everything works together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So you might be down in this situation right now, but I dare you to look up. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. The Bible says your help comes from him, not your job, not the president, not the mayor. Your help comes from Jesus Christ. And if you just keep him first and acknowledge him and everything that you do, oh, yeah. the word declares he's going to direct your path. Oh, yeah. He's going to lead you and take you to the next destiny. He's going to open up a window that no man can shut. He's going to open up a door that no man can close because we serve that kind of guy. I don't care. Hey, St. Louis, this is your brother, Kirk Franklin, and you're checking out WDP Center Stage. Oh, uh, y'all people, get ready to get your rock on. Get your rock on. Get your rock on. We're going to go right first. We're going to go right first. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. To the right. Come on now. Ain't no talk like team talk. Ain't no talk like. Come on now. Ain't no talk like.
from the east side to the west side. That's what I'm talking about, both sides of the river, both sides of the Mississippi. And everybody knows, I said, ain't no trolling. Ain't no trolling. Ain't no trolling. We'll see you next week. We're 